much stuff to go over. Oh, you know what? Uh, I got. I got to do this real quick. I got to break this up. We got so much to cover, so much excitement going on right now. We got another, <laughs> another packed room full of guests. Awesome. Packed room full of guests. Awesome. We got, we had another like rocking mozo. The energy, the energy in here was off the chain. Like the environment was hot. We're, we're like, it's on right now. And it's just the beginning. So I want to go through, I want to talk a lot tonight about our system and the importance of our system. Because, I, like, it's funny, as I overlap leadership with, like, other leaders and other offices and SMBs and people who are earning their ring and they're, having, they're winning and all that sort of stuff. But as I'm talking, like, I had a conversation today with a quarter million dollar year earner. You say quarter million dollar earner? Quarter million dollar year earner. Quarter million dollar year. Which, by the way, why would you want a quarter of anything? <laughs> really? Um, and they're still running their business like they're self-employed. They're still running their business like they're self-employed. Not like a business. No, self-employed, making a quarter million dollars. But still self-employed, not running it like a business. So what I want to talk about is our system because our system takes us from that self-employed quadrant to the uh, to the business owner quadrant. So can I get your guys' help with a couple of things? Yeah. Certainly. Can I get you guys to talk a couple of things? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is the English speaking group, right? Yeah. English is my third language. What do we say? Just no. This is yes, this is no. Okay. Yeah. So, a couple of things I need your help with. Okay. So. So this is the text I set up, right? This Google survey is for us to learn which classes you've already tested out of and which ones you still need to master. Please complete the whole survey so we know where everyone is. Thanks. And then there's, see this little thing here? That's a Google survey. So that was sent out to all the SMDs, all the trainers. Now, if you didn't get this from your SMD, after the meeting, you have my permission to Verbally abuse them, physically assault them, whatever you feel. Because they're not doing a good job of just passing information on to you. Okay? So, oh, that's awesome. Um, above there, I think it was above. Above there, tonight's agenda. T3, T3, train the trainer, right? Use the same link every week to schedule your train the trainer classes. Use the same link when? Every week. Every week. Every week. So you, if you just hang on to that, you don't need to wait for anybody to pass it on to you, right? right. Please continue to use this link if you're serious about getting certified. We will be certifying people on classes again tonight, in addition to actually training on the scripts. General training is going to be off the chain. How's general training going to be? Off, off the chain. chain. Shocker. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Don't miss it. Make sure someone <laughs> on your team confirms your guests for you. So if you've invited a guest, we don't want you confirming that they'll be here. We want somebody on your team to confirm that person for you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, they don't even know the person I invited. That's the reason we want somebody other than you confirming. Because the fact that you know them, they listen differently. And they look at it differently. When somebody they don't know calls and confirms, a couple things happen. They go, all of a sudden, like, Louie invites this person who knows from the church. All of a sudden, somebody not named Louie calls the same person and go, Hey, Joe, we see that you're a guest of Louie's. We're excited to have you. And they're like, Oh, I guess this is, like, a legit professional deal. I thought Louie was just inviting me to some deal, right? But I guess this is something other than I expected. The other thing that will happen is Louie will then, or, or that person who's confirming will then confirm the details, the dress code, what time it starts, what time it ends. Sometimes we have guests that go, oh, I didn't know it was supposed to go until then. I have to leave in a half an hour or something like that. Well, if they're professionally confirmed, they know in advance. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's always important. And as soon, as soon as you invite the guest, pass that on to your field trainer or your SMD so that we can begin the confirmation process. If you're rolling up to the meeting at 6.30 and going, hey, will you confirm my guest? It's probably a little bit late. Right? Then notice what I have right here underneath this text. That was to schedule your participation in the train the trainer. Okay, so I need everybody's participation. So if you don't have that Google survey, 
I want somebody to put it on the Chino office group me right now so that everybody's got access to it. Here's why it's important. We've got so many people testing out of classes, we don't know which classes to offer. The only way we'll know is when you fill out the Google survey and go, I tested out of these four, I haven't tested out of these five, and then we begin to see who's tested out of what, what's, what do they still need, then we can sort of redirect the classes that you're looking for and make sure they're available. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Help us help, help you. All you have to do is fill out one Google <laughs> survey. We've got, like, literally this huge building of support staff that's figuring out who's certified and what and who's not to do all of the hard work. You just need to say, here's what I've done. Cool? Everybody down? Yes? Yes. yes. Okay, let's drop that. You guys are getting bored with my mirroring. Okay? But I just wanted to be clear. If you're not getting that, make sure your SMB is doing a good job of forwarding information to you. Okay? And maybe we should do a better job of putting it on group me. That's probably on my fault. That's probably my responsibility because I rely so much on text, so I can do a better job of that. Say, Schleiman, you can do a better job. Schleiman, you can do a better job. Say it louder. Schleiman, you can do a better job. See, that's why I'm not very good at you guys. You don't even know how to like put me in my place. Right? Like, Schleiman, pretty, 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 please do a better job. Like, like my wife would ever say it that way, right? So, uh, there is going to be another Google survey coming out in addition to this one. What's coming out soon? Another Google survey. survey. All these Google surveys. Here's what the next one is for. It's, it has to be separate. You know what? No, we'll add a, we'll, I will add, a, I'll see if I can just add something to the current one. I want to find out if you've already been recognized with a certificate in the class that you've been certified. So I want to make sure that by Saturday we get caught up on all the certificates of all the classes you've been certified for. So I'm going to see if we can add that, okay? All right. What is all this about? What is all this about? Anybody know? What are we doing all this for? Get more trainers. Get more trainers. Excellent. Thank you. So here's, here's what T3 is about. I'm going to walk you guys through our system as fast as I can, okay? So T3 is about this. It's about two things. I want to build your competence. I want to build your what? Competence. competence. What does competence mean? Proficiency. Proficiency. Good. Well, how else would you describe it? Skill level. Skill level. Excellent. Your competence is your skill set, your ability to do something correctly, your ability to execute a certain task related to our job. So I want to build your competence, right? And guess what happens when we build your competence? Your confidence goes up. And guess what happens when your confidence goes up? Then you start to use the skill in real life, not just in role play. So you're in here role playing, role playing, role playing. You get better and better and better. Finally, the trainer goes, you're like, you nailed it. And then you go to an SMB, they go, you nailed it. Now we're feeling, I know the words, because our business is a business of words. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about their job, and I'm like, my job's so easy. It's, it's just, all I do is talk. Like, all I do is talk. It's like the easiest job in the world. There's no heavy lifting involved. There's no sweating involved, except when the, we don't run the air conditioner. <laughs> all I do is talk. But... To make, a, to create a business based on talking, you have to understand it's a business of words. Some words are better than other words. Words matter, right? The words we use matter. And so what we're trying to do is in subsections, little chunks teach you the words. You get really good at them. You get proficient. And all of a sudden, your confidence goes up because the trainer says I nailed it. The SME says I nailed it. And now when I'm talking to somebody, I know what to say. So in the real world, I actually say it. Guess what happens when I say it in the real world? What? We have a room full of guests. And a gangload of appointments. Because people know what to say. And then when they say it and it works, it builds their confidence even more. <coughs> so these are like interrelated. And the more confident I get, the more competent I become. And the more competent I become, the more it grows my confidence. And I start to get results. And as I get results my beliefs and expectations go up. I was talking to somebody today in one of my offices, and they did a ton of numbers this month, like a ton of numbers. And we're breaking down their numbers because we're reviewing how did September end, what adjustments they need to make in October. And I go, to be honest with you, you worked your tush up. Like, you worked so hard. I'm super proud of you, and you should be proud of yourself how hard you worked. And the results were outstanding. However... The results were a 25 to 1 ratio. For every 25 people they talked to, they got an appointment. 
So they talked to so many people that it was a lot of appointments and they got a lot of results. I'm like, but to be honest, that's a really, really poor ratio. So I want you to work with this specific person in your office. They're really good at this specific subset. And I want you to get better at this little <laughs> thing because if you get better, you can go from 25 to 1 to I think you can go from 25 to 1 to like 10 or 12 to 1 almost overnight. And then going from like 10 or 12 to 1 down to like 8 to 1 to 6 to 1, that's going to take a, like some more fine tuning. But I think you can go from 25 to 1 literally to 10 to 1 like that. Now it's not about working harder. It's about working more effectively. I'm getting more results for the same amount of effort. When I'm getting more results for the same amount of effort, what do you think happens to my confidence? Goes way up. What do you think happens to my expectations for each and every call? What do you think happens to my beliefs overall about winning here? All goes up. What do you think happens in my relationships with the people that are on my team and my expectations of them and my beliefs in what they can do and my ability to teach them? All of that goes up. All of that goes up. So this is at the core of what we're trying to do here. Okay, so there's. It's going to drive me nuts how it keeps, like, going away. Because I've got all, what? Want to change the timer? Yeah, I'm going to hand this to you, Warner, and you can change it for me. So there's three components that I need help with tightening up. We sort of covered them all already, right? One is the Google survey. What is it? Google survey. And who's going to do the Google survey tonight? Everybody. Who's going to do the Google survey tonight? Everybody. <laughs> the second is schedulicity. What is it? Schedulicity. And then the third is, I want to get the certificates going. I was just talking in the back to Fitzroy. He's sort of the mastermind behind all the technology and stuff. I think what I want to do, I was sort of avoiding it, but I think what I can do is get one of these big release boards, but like a nice one with the different subjects. Of, here's the certified builder. Here's the certified trainer. Here's the elite builder. Here's the elite trainer. And have like so that you can see where you're progressing in each stage and when you're going to get like, okay, I'm now at this level. I'm now at that level. I've now got both of these. So I'm gonna, I don't, I can't promise it'll be done by Saturday because my wife is leaving for Oregon in the morning with my oldest son. On a, they're going to like five or six college campuses and meeting coaches, and he's playing in a camp. And so I'm going to be running a business with multiple offices. I'm going to be a stay-at-home soccer dad. <laughs> and like I'm going to be doing all this stuff. Hopefully all at once, right? Um, I'm talking about our system tonight because I want, like, we're growing so much right now, but I want to jam my foot on the gas pedal, and I want it, I want us to go from growing to exploding right now. And there's certain nuances in the business and our system. I need to cover the whole system top to bottom. There's certain nuances I need to take out and point out. And, and the first one is this. Great followers. Great what? Followers. Put this in your notes, please. <coughs> this is not Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Become great leaders. leaders. Who becomes great leaders? Great followers. Who becomes great leaders? Great followers. Who becomes great leaders? Great followers. How many of you want to become a great leader? Yeah. What's the first step? Oh, not to be a follower, to be a great follower. Not to be a follower, to be a great follower. Literally, um, I was, um, I, so I came home after Jack's football game tonight. And I, I, I was doing a call with a college recruiter for my oldest son. We just finished the call. And at Jack's football game, there was Steel Twyford, who you know, right? Uh, and who you know, obviously. And there was my son and Brett Ward, who you know, my nephew, right? He's been over for a couple of fights. And so they were talking about stuff, and Warner's name came up. And when we were back at the house after the call, my son is like, Dad, I think it's funny that Warner is always, like, like all over you. Like, he's, like, always all over you, always calling you. He's always with you. He's always offering to help you. He's like, all, and I go, I go, Alex? Let me explain it to you in a basketball sense. Some people would say, I think it's funny that Alex Kidd, every time he's taken out of a game and put on the bench, he always works his way to sit right next to the coach on the bench. He doesn't want to be two people away. He doesn't want to be three. He doesn't want to be at the end of the bench. He wants to be sitting right here next to the I go, why do you always want to sit, like since you're in fifth grade, why do you always want to sit next to the coach? And he gave me all the reasons why, right? Because great followers 
become great leaders. I said, Alice, it's the same thing. I go, you know the reason Warner wants to spend all this time with me? It's not because he thinks I'm going to break up with Michelle and Marion. <laughs> it's, it's not because I'm like so charming and debonair. It's not because I ever do anything for him, because he's always one buying me coffee and lunch and dinner, right? It's because great followers become great leaders. I said, he's just around me as much as he possibly can. <laughs> Because he wants to bounce ideas off me, he wants to learn from me, he wants to get me talking about things, he wants me to go over things I've done over before so he understands it better and better and better. He's just constant. he wants to get as close to me as possible because he wants to get as much out of me as possible. I think you want to steal your recipe on try to. Yeah, I got, I, I got two in the fridge I'm about to throw down. I got two in the fridge, yeah, so that wouldn't be a bad idea. Great followers become great on the grill. Right? That's, that's, a different, that's a different training that we'll do. But great followers. So I want you in your notes right now. I just want you to assess how great of a follower am I? How great of a follower am I? If you're a believer, how great of a follower am, of a, am I of the Savior? How great of a follower am I? Do I call myself a follower? But is there enough evidence that anybody could convict me of actually being a follower? Of either the savior if you're a believer or of your leader in the business. Could anybody actually convict you? Christopher, can I just say something? Um, last night I sat with my new teammate, uh, Latisse and her husband, Carrie. Okay. And he says about preaching a, a subject at church, and the subject was like, if, they're, like, if I'm convicted, if I'm accused of being a Christian, yeah. would there be enough evidence yeah. to convict me? Yeah. Amen. What do you think he got the idea? <laughs> oh, you've been following me on Instagram and YouTube. Come on now, give me some credit. Maybe Snapchat, but yeah. Now we know. Right? <clears throat> Great followers. Great followers. You want to get close to the source. The closer you are to the source the more you're going to get from the source. The farther you are from the source, you know what, I, I'll do this at every big event. Somebody like, Tom, like if this was a big, big meeting and Tom's like sitting back here in a big, big meeting, I always come up to the guy like Tom and go, hey man, what's it like? He'll be like, what's what like? I go, what's it like sitting this far back? I've never sat this far back in a meeting before. <laughs> he thinks I'm kidding. Mm. I ain't kidding. All the A students sit here. That's where the A students sit like, you ever see in high school and college, the A students sit in the back? Never. They're always in the front row. Why? They want to be as close as possible to where the information is coming from, to, from the, as close as possible to the source. To the source. I want you to reflect on that and go, what do I need to do to be a better follower? What do I need to do to get closer to the source? Not just to say I'm close to the source, because actually some people, like I've seen this happen. <coughs> see, having like Charlie A, my like, like People want to get close to them just to be able to say, like, oh, yeah, I, I'm close. Oh, I can pop up a text right now. I can call them right now. I'm they want to say that they're close, but they don't use that proximity to challenge them, to grow their identity, to shift them. They're using it almost like I know a celebrity. Right? You want to get close to the source, okay? By the way, I'm not saying that. Uh, let me be clear about this. I'm not saying this because I want like 50 people going, I want to be close to you. That's not why I'm saying it. Okay? Like, that's, that's maniacal. Right? Like, one of the beautiful things about this business is you can build like a rock star celebrity type of income, but live a small town type lifestyle where you like, you are just a bug. You got to dinner, you got to wherever, and just nobody bothers you, nobody knows who you are. Then you walk into a WFG event, and you're like rock star celebrity, and then you walk out, and you're normal. Right? And it's huge. You get sort of the momentary, like, woo, that's awesome, right? And then you sort of get to live your life without being bothered. So I'm not saying, oh, I'm just saying, like, think about this. Whether that's Stephen Carroll, whether it's Dean, whether it's Ricky, whether it's Jim, like, whoever this is, whether it's Dan, whether it's me, like, how close are you getting to the source? Are you getting close enough to really get what you... Why, why don't we get close to the source? What? 
We're not doing what we're supposed to. Is that true or not true? True. true. Right? So we're afraid if I get close to the source, that's going to be exposed. Right. And maybe if I keep my distance, the source won't notice uh -huh. that I'm not doing what I'm supposed to. Why else? <laughs> it's uncomfortable. You know, every time I'm around Rich Dolly or Ed or even Dan, I, like I've got great relationships with them, very close relationships with them. Yet there's always a smug, there's always this element of at any point they could put me on blast for all different parts of my business, and I better like know it inside now and be ready to talk about it. And I wouldn't want it in any other way. I didn't get in the business and go, man, the main reason I like to get in the business is to be buddy-buddy with Rich and Ed and with Dan. I got in the business for leadership and mentorship for them to help grow me. And if there's not that dynamic tension where they make me feel a little bit uncomfortable, <laughs> then I'm wasting that resource. Because that resource can shape and mold me and grow my identity, grow myself. Like It can get me to places that I can't get by myself. But if I'm just using that resource as just a buddy-buddy, I'm completely wasting that resource. I, like, plenty of people are buddy-buddy with them. Plenty of people are buddy-buddy with me. But that's like a waste of the research. I've got people all the time that reach out to me and they want to, like, association with me. Here's what that code word, here's what that normally means. They want to take me out for an hour and a half long meal. Like, I can already afford my own meal, right? But they want to take me out, splurge on an hour and a half meal. They want to, like, me to tell them all this stuff, and then I literally never hear from them again. <laughs> Where you could take that hour and a half, which is, not, like, if they had, like, nine, ten-minute calls or texts with me, or they had 18 five-minute ones, it would be of so much greater value to them. Because it, the pro, they'd be closer. It'd be five, like, well, five minutes every week for the next 20 weeks. They'd get way more out of that, right? <clears throat> so, um, you have your hand up? No, okay. So, there's a system in place, and here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to run the system as an office and teach you the system at the same time. So, uh, is Tim teaching a class? Yes. Uh, so, Tim and Evelyn this month did 5 five thirty. Give it up for Tim. Woo! That's like something legit. 5 five thirty. Now, the, the next step for them is, is what we're doing with the five and what we did with the five clients. The five clients should have produced us five to ten referrals each. The five associates, top 100, well, down to top 25. That's like 125 pretty hot leads, and it's 500 plus <coughs> like good leads, right? So how we're working with them to grow that and to work through that is huge, okay? Let me give you another example of train the trainer on steroids and sort of the system at work. Eduardo and Adela. So Eduardo and Adela have been here, has it been two weeks yet? No. Close. Yeah. Not quite, close. Were you here like two weeks ago on a Wednesday as a guest yes. maybe? Yeah. So hasn't really been AMA two weeks. You got four guests here tonight? How many guests have you had before tonight? Three? Five or six before. Five or six before. <laughs> Nine or ten guests. How many appointments have you been on so far? Five appointments, nine or ten guests, and they haven't been here 14 days yet. <coughs> They're great followers right now. The moment I met him in the Mozo two weeks ago tonight, I, it, look, we had another packed house. I don't know how many guests were in there the night that you were here. 15 or 20, it was packed, right? I don't even know what they said in there that night. But I met him in the Mozo, and I was like, of all the guests I met in the Mozo, I go, this kid's different. This kid's different. Right here, he's different. I could tell right away. And I was like, we got to run the play the right way. They came in and made great followers. How? I'll give you two different examples. One is... Has Warner played any kind of a role in setting up any of the appointments or inviting any of the guests? Yes. Pretty significant role? Yes. yes. Have you been really close to him every step of the way trying to figure out what to do next? And then at the same time, hey, I want you to call this person. We can talk to this person. Or this person said this. What should I say that? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So number one, they're great followers. Number two, can I, sh can I share with you something that they do? 
that not enough people do. You know how we have this train the trainer? They have their own train the trainer. They have an appointment here last night. They come in, how soon, how, you were here over an hour before the appointment. Probably an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, an hour and a half to two hours before the appointment. I'm in here mentoring a kid that I mentor, and they come in, and we say hi. Then they go in the conference room, and I get up, I get up to get a spoon for some Greek yogurt, right? Um, and they're in there, and they're role-playing the ASAP presentation. I want you to just think about this a second. So, literally, if this is like the door to that conference room, I step into the room. It's just the two of them in there role-playing out loud, not like, sh not like quite loud, right? And I step in, okay? I've got a pretty big presence when I step in a room. I'm pretty loud. I'm pretty obnoxious. I'm hard to miss, right? And you're brand new. You haven't even been here two weeks, and you know, this guy's the big shot, the CEO, making all the money. <coughs> they didn't miss a freaking beat. He didn't look, he didn't even glance up at me. He just stayed right in, boom, 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 boom. Didn't ask me what what I wanted. Nothing. They just kept going, boom, 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 I go, oh wow. <laughs> These two are killers. Like killers. Because they're locked in and they're determined to what? Get competent at this, because they know that's where their confidence will come from. Right? And so then afterwards. Uh, Warner sends a text like, oh my god, did Warner just crushed the presentation today? Shocker, he was here almost two hours in advance with his wife and they're role playing it. Shocker, <laughs> he that he crushed it, right? How would you expect anything else? So, what's my point? <coughs> my point is, we've got a system here and we're trying to do our best to teach everybody the system and when you just when you use the words we give you, when we, you run the play like you heard Louie talking about up here, the way we've designed it, the way it's been running for years and years and years, you're going to get results. If you're not getting results, you're not using our words or you're not running the system. Because our words and our system isn't dependent on a certain personality type. It's not based on a certain age or background or market or anything. That's why it's a system, because it neutralizes all that sort of stuff out, right? So, great followers become great leaders. Oh, thank you. You did it for me. Why don't you think about, um, Sam, how many guests do you have here tonight? Uh, three. Three, and you had seven confirmed? Yep. In the past week, how many of appointments have been, uh, have you either ran or been set up? Uh, approximately. Approximately, uh, three ran. Three, yeah. Okay. And how did you get, uh, uh, did you do that on your own or somebody help you? Oh, no, I did it with Lori. Okay. <laughs> what about Deanne? Deanne took off. How many, Isabel, how many appointments or guests has Deanne had that somebody's helped her with? Oh, my gosh. Roughly. A, a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Isabel has three guests tonight or four? Three. You know why she has three guests here tonight? Anybody curious? Yeah. yeah. By the way, by the way, Isabel, do you know how many associates you have here tonight? Ten, including me, I said. Ten including you. So you have as many as Dina and Velvet tonight. You have more guests than them and as many associates. And Isabel's team right now is about to put a spanking on everybody else. Her team is pulling ahead of everybody else, right? So let me show you what's going on here. We've got Isabel, right? Give it up for Isabel. And if you're on Isabel's team... Uh, just raise your hand real quick. So, <laughs> so you've got so, uh, Eduardo, Adela, Gracie, Vanessa, Isabel, Sam, John, Errol, Muhammad, Deanne, Yenneth. Yenneth. What? Did you include Yenneth on the team? No, I didn't. Eleven. You have eleven. So you beat team with eleven today. Yenneth. Right. So. Uh, and she's got other associates that are here to the races. And training. What? And, and we just and got Lily. Lily. Lily, 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 Lily yes. Okay. So, I want, I want you to listen to me on this though. Isabel can't effectively, Isabel's a great field trainer. She can't effectively be making calls for 11 different people, <coughs> driving guest counts, driving appointments, and writing all those appointments. She would go crazy. So what she's done is she's using the matchup system. Now Lori's been helping Sam make calls. Louie's been helping Sam make calls. Somebody's been helping Deanne make calls. And all of a sudden what happens? 
she's getting her people more guests and more appointments, so their confidence is going up because they're having more experiences. They're having more guest experiences, so their teams are growing. They're having more appointments, so their skills are going up and their belief in the business. And guess what else is happening? Isabel's got time freed up because she's not trying to do all the work and feeling overwhelmed. So now she has four guests in here tonight because she's got time to do other parts of her business. And she's got some of the best trainers in the office. Now, is she giving away something on matchup? <coughs> like if Warner goes out with Eduardo and Adela, she's giving up half, right? But here's my belief. As she's doing that, She's going to get more halves here and more halves there and more halves there and more halves there than she could individuals on her own. Does that make sense? Yes. And so that's the way our system is designed. Our system is designed, it's called the matchup system. It's called the matchup system. And you match up to catch up. We've talked about this in elements for a while. Now we'll talk about it a little bit further. So we talk about our system. Note to file new markers. Okay? So we've got, oh Lord. And they'll probably end early. Uh, prospect, right? Approach <coughs> contact. <coughs> Presentation. This is our system. This is what differentiates us from so, some small mom and pop, right? Uh, follow up. Let's get Start up. Startup duplication, yeah. Startup. I needed a cup of coffee before I came. And duplication. No. So, here's. Oh, oh give it up for Evelyn. Five, five, thirty. Oh, and our new producer. <laughs> keep the five, five, thirty. Just keep the markers coming, right? That means way more. Oh, okay, get all the. Get all the duds out of the way because I got some studs, right? So, approach contact. Prospect list and approach contact. If you flip over the back of the book, who controls the prospect list development? Leader. Leader does. Leader paints a picture of how the team will be built. Okay? Approach contact. Who contacts that list? <coughs> Leader, it says, I want you to write this in your notes. <coughs> Leader controls the point of contact. And the second sub-bullet underneath there is leader and new associate act as joint inviter. Okay? So let me be clear about this. What is What exactly does this mean? Because a bunch of you are getting it and some of you are still hanging on. <coughs> Your warm market. What does that mean? Your warm market, if you've been here two weeks, like Eduardo and Adela, your warm market has been here three, four, five, six years, right? Your warm market is best contacted by a leader not named you, who controls the point of contact and acts as joint provider. That means they work with you to call into your warm market. You've got credibility, but you're too close to them, so you're not able to leverage your own credibility. So what am I suggesting you do? Here's what I'm suggesting you do, exactly what Isabel's done with her team, exactly what I've done with my whole base shop. Let me tell you how much I believe in the matchup principle. I've got Ricky Monte, who's not even in my hierarchy. I've got Lori Fenelon, who's in my hierarchy, but not in my base shop. I've got Jim Maloney, who's in my hierarchy, but not in my base shop, and I'm using them for matchup. Why? Because Isabel is one part of my component, one part of my base shop, but there's only, I don't want to be the bottleneck in my base shop. There's too many talented people here who want to win, who can win, who've got this that's largely still in there. <laughs> Their warm market either they tried to call into or nobody, or they haven't called and nobody else has. And so you get a leader calling into that and great things begin to happen. We don't have to convince anybody. It's easy to leverage somebody else's credibility and get get a lot of guests and a lot of appointments. Some will, some won't. Okay. But it's a numbers game. We want to blow up the numbers. So by doing this, we're running the system. Here's what I'd encourage you to do. Like Silton, I'd encourage you to do. Spellman, I'd encourage you to do. Gracie, I'd encourage you to do. Get refast started. Like you're brand new. 
start working with a leader. We can help you to get the right leader to work with you to mass out what's going on in your war market because those are the people that we care about the most. Those are the people that we can help the most. Those are the people that we want to get to help the most. But if we're trying to contact, we're not helping them. Matter of fact, just the opposite. When we're contacting people in our war market, they don't think we're helping them at all. They think we're helping ourselves and just trying to sell them something and just trying to make money off of them, just trying to use the relationship. If I call into your market or Maloney calls into your market or Lori calls into your market, they get a completely different perception. And now they understand it's about helping you with your training. It's about helping you with your licensing. It's about helping you with your certification or validation. They're willing to help. We do this little presentation. It lasts 25 or 30 minutes, seven pages long. It's not assertive, not aggressive. We're not just, they're trying to sell anything. Matter of fact, if they wanted to buy something on a first one, we don't even have an application. We couldn't even sell them anything. I didn't bring anything because we think it's inappropriate. We're just here to share some ideas. If you like the agent, if you feel like there's value in the ideas, if you want to move forward, invite us back. But you've already done enough of helping Silton or helping Spellman or helping Gracie just by being one of their practice presentations as they're going for this validation or this certification or this promotion or this title. And so they, they, do, they do the appointment out of obligation. They move forward out of interest. They do the appointment out of obligation just to help you. They decide to move forward to the next step because they're interested. They find value. They, they want to move forward. Does that make sense? Yes. Which completely changes the environment altogether. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the next step is the presentation, which I just began to cover. In that presentation, you've got the trainee <coughs> and the trainer. <clears throat> trainee and the trainer. The trainee brings all the credibility. The trainer brings all the expertise. When I sit down with Kim in her market, she's got all the credibility. Without her, I'm a stranger and lost. <laughs> I'm the expert. Without me, she's sort of lost because many people in the market won't view her as an expert, even though she really is. They just won't view her that way. Okay? Together, we're the perfect combination because there's credibility, trustworthiness, and there's expertise. When I sit down and do a, we do a training appointment, she does the training appointment. Her friend has helped her out by being a part of the training appointment. We created enough value. Now they want to move forward. Why? Not out of obligation, but because they see real value in what we're doing. Okay? So that's how the presentation's designed to work. Or when the leader is making the calls and controlling the point of contact and working with you as a joint inviter, or they invite them to the BPM as a guest to come down and support you and see what it is that you're going to be doing and see how the business works and see what we're doing in the community. And then when they're invited down as a guest, it's sort of unfair. We bring them down, we have this crazy hot environment where everybody's excited, everybody's motivated, everybody's positive, everybody's like, oh, and then like, I've never been, like, it seems like a Pentecostal church or something. I've never been a place like this, right? It's like, whoa, right? And so then they go in there, and we tell them a bunch of stories and use a bunch of PowerPoints, and 95% of the time they come out of there, Super impressed, and the ones that want to get started with us usually don't remember anything that we talked about in there. But what they remember is how they felt up here, how they felt with you guys. And that's the benefit of a system and a team, because I'm pretty good at this business, but if they that guest came in and I'm the only dude here, as good as I am at the words, it's not the same experience. It's not, when they get a chance to meet Christine, and then Samuel, and then Kute, and then they meet Adela, and then they meet James. It's a completely different experience for them than if they just come in and meet me, no matter how much success they had or how good I am at the words. We create an experience in here, and there's a magic in what we're doing in here. Right? And so it's this presentation and this environment that we've created that all of us are creating together. Like, we can't do it without it. It's like... Velvet, I was getting on Velvet as Louie's going through recognition. I go, how many associates you got here tonight? She's like, she gave me a number, and I could tell she was not 100% certain in her number. I'm like, how many you got? And she got up and started counting, and it wasn't the same number. 
I'd already counted my, like, in the midst of everything, my group five times because I never get the same number twice because I'm not good at addition, right? But it's like, to maintain this kind of environment, I need to immediately know who's here, who's not. Who's missing? Why are they missing? What do I need to do to make sure they don't miss again on Saturday? Right? Oh, I thought you were waiting for me, Gracie. So, the environment is super important. Here's the other thing I want you guys to consider. Nobody else in financial services does this like we do it. It is this environment that we create on the presentation. And this environment that we create with the training and the trainer that I just explained to you guys, it happens either in their home, at their kitchen table, in their home where? Table. Does it happen in the family room? No. no. Does it happen in the living room? No. Does it happen in the dining room? No. Does it happen in the bedroom? No. Well, it happens in the bedroom, but our presentation doesn't, right? <laughs> I can do a presentation in the bedroom. Man! No. It happens in the kitchen. The presentation happens in the kitchen. Why? Because most husbands and wives, most couples, talk about the serious things, their future, the kids' college, the debt, the dreams that they have, the bigger house that they want. When they're sitting down at the kitchen table, most couples rarely sit at their dining room table. That's a couple of times a year they're in there. They never sit in their living room unless it's like, you know, there's a funeral and somebody's coming over after the funeral or something. Like they never, it's like where they sit and really talk about things is the kitchen table when they're eating. And that's where we want to be. We want to be in that environment. By the way, we don't do these presentations at Starbucks. Uh, we don't do them at a Jiffy Lube. We don't do them, uh, we don't do them at random places. There's two places where the environment makes sense to have this conversation. One is in their home at the kitchen table. The second place is in one of our offices. Because people are used to going to an accountant's office, an attorney's office, a financial services office, and talking about those matters. You don't meet with your accountant at Starbucks. Right? You go, hey, I'm going to meet with an estate attorney today. Where? Oh, uh, down at Mimi's? Yeah. What? That's not the way things are done. So... The environment is important, and then where we're at is important. And then one other thing is we got a lot of new people. we got a lot of new people. I, I, I want to get to something real quick. At the kitchen table, okay, <coughs> this is the kitchen table. Here's the husband. Here's the wife. Okay? Ideally, ideally if it's me and I'm training you, I want to sit here. As the field trainer, ideally across from the husband. And I want the trainee with the credibility to sit across from the wife. Why? Obvious reasons. I'm an unusually attractive man. <laughs> if I'm sitting across from the wife and she can't like, hello, shoulders up, hello, professional presentation, he might get bothered. If I'm sitting over here and looking straight at him, he can't put that on me, right? Hopefully he's got his eyes above his shoulders. Hopefully, right? So, but ideally I want to sit directly across from him and I want the trainee directly across from her. Now if you're a beautiful young lady like Kim is, or like Michelle is, you may want to switch it up. You may want to sit across from the wife, and I, that's your call. But we want to sit directly across. Here's how we don't want to sit. One of us here, one of us here, one of us here, and one of us here. Because there's, between the husband and wife, they both see each other out of the corner of their eye, and there's all kinds of indirect communication that can happen <laughs> unintentionally that can get us off the path. If I'm sitting like this, he has to turn his head and look at her purposefully to communicate, and she has to do the same to him. Does that make sense? Yes. It's really important where we sit in the home and how we sit. Because if they're sitting like this, I could be taught, the trainee could be going through the, the page and talking about debt. She could roll her eyes because she feels the pressure that they're under so much debt, they're under debt for so long. He sees her rolling in her eyes and goes, oh, man, she's bored. I better get these people out of here. Well, what she's really thinking is, I'm tired of this. I hope these people can help us. 
but he's not picking that up. He just sees that she's rolling her eyes or that she's nervously fidgeting when we're talking about that. Oh, she doesn't like them. I better get them out of here. When it's like this, they have to be very intentional about their communication. Does that make sense? Yes. You guys see where environment is important? Yes? yes? yes. Am I boring you? No. So the environment is, and here's important, we do loads of, the environment we're sitting down with people is equally as important. Now, whose job is it to get us to the kitchen table? The trainee. The trainee. If me and David are going on a training appointment, and he's the trainee, and he knows Kim, and has known Kim for years, and I've never met her, it's awfully awkward for me to be bossing her around telling her where we're going to sit in her home. Who's this guy you just brought over? Who's the jerk who thinks he's going to run my house? David's got a relationship. He can get us there without looking like a jerk. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. One other thing that we haven't covered in a while, because we've got so many more appointments going on right now, there's just lots of little things to be missed. When the trainee and the trainer get to the kitchen table and we sit down, there's a little bit of small talk and then the trainee edifies the trainer. What does that mean? They properly introduce the trainer. What do we mean by properly introduce? Properly introduce, edification is always best when it's genuine and sincere. Not when you're like exaggerating. Exaggerating never works. It never works. I want you to be genuine and sincere. Okay? So if I was introducing Jim, hey, before we get started, I just want to take a moment. If I'm sitting down, right, let's say I'm sitting down with Louie and Jeanette, okay, and they're a couple, and I've been friends with them. And I say, before we get started, I just want to take a moment to thank, what do they think are the next words coming out of my mouth? Amen. Them. I'm their friends, and they've taken time out of their schedule to help me, so that's immediate what they assume. Hey, before we get started, I just want to take a moment to thank Jim for taking time out of his busy schedule to come tonight. <coughs> Jim's been doing this for a long time. He's very, very experienced. He actually helped me and my wife, Michelle, you guys know, with our financial plan. And, and when we were done, I, like the first thing that came to my head is, I wish I would have met with him five years ago. <laughs> like the information he shared just really helped us to get back on track with some things that are important with us. He's super busy. He's in high demand. And he, and he, so he can't be everywhere at once. But as a favor to me, he came because of my relationship with you guys. I wanted to make sure that if I'm going to get some training tonight and I'm going to spend time with the two of you guys, I wanted really the person that I felt strongest about is really, really good. I have no idea if he can help you the way he helped us, but I just want to thank Jim for taking the time out of his schedule to come here and train me and spend some time with you. So I want, I want psychologically, I want you to understand this. We've got a good relationship, so they already look up to me in some regard. Not like, oh, I'm this, but in some regard, they look up to me because that's what friends do. We admire and respect and look up to each other in different ways, right? What I just did is say, I look up to this guy quite a bit. So we've got this kind of relationship. If this is somebody I look up to, by default, what am I projecting on them? For them to look up to him. If I look up to him that much and they know me this well, they're likely to look up to him. What I just did was create an environment where the doctors in the house, they're the patients. The doctors in the house, they're the patients. Right? He's not some guy here trying to sell him something. He's somebody who's here that possibly can help. I just created an environment where it's relaxing, it's comfortable. They're not a, sitting like this afraid of being sold something. Right? Now, the very first thing Jim is going to do is going to go ahead and... <laughs> That's not, thank you, Chris, for that site. She didn't mean to say that. But what I want to do is I want to just take a moment to thank the two of you, Louie and Jeanette, because I know how busy everybody is. Me and my wife have two kids. We're busy as can be. You guys taking the time out of your busy schedule to help Christopher with his training and sit down and go through this. That says a lot about you guys. It says a lot about your relationship. They're going to get properly thanked. The thing the trainee pack panics about is if I don't thank them, they're never going to get thanked, and they're going to think that I'm weird. Or obnoxious. It's the first thing the trainer does is thanks them. And then also we're like, we're good. Now we've got a great environment that's conducive to learning and teaching and listening. And people's physiology is open. It's not closed. Here it's not closed. And we can converse about things that, let's be honest, these are not things that are easy for lots of couples to talk about because they're not happy with where they're at. So we want to create an environment that's comfortable for them to talk about this stuff. Okay? James. Yeah. Is George trying to do the presentation? Are you still thinking? Yeah. Yeah. 
Because you're not, you're, even when you're the trainee and you're doing the presentation, you're not showing up like you're the expert. You're still the dude with credibility, and he's still coming out to help you as a trainer get better. Right? Absolutely. Great question. Other question. Lord. Do you have any tips on a, a similar edification, but for people who maybe have been matched up with someone they don't have an extensive history with? Or any tips? Yeah, so here's the thing, I think. The best thing, what kind of a thing? Yes. The best thing is for the trainee and the trainer on the... I'm going to break for guests and I'll get back to that point. Okay. okay. Really important. We got a full house of guests. If I just I was sharing this with John earlier in Adela, if you re refer your very favorite steak restaurant to a buddy of yours, like the it's this is the best place on the planet, and they went there, after they went there, you wouldn't go. So what'd you think? If it's like your favorite steak restaurant on the planet, right? You'd be like, what the label? But what'd you think of the appetizers? What'd you think of the fillet? Right? You, right? So, so you, what you want to do is just lead them emotion. Mostly with the right questions. Wasn't that awesome? What'd you like the most? Was the part about helping people? The part about making money? Wasn't that exciting? Didn't Ricky do a great job? Thanks so much for coming down. What were you most excited about? Just sort of lead them with those kinds of questions and then we'll go from there. We're going to need help in there because we have a lot of guests and we have more guests than we do trainers. So uh, if we could get you two to go in there and help, right? Uh, Jeanette and Louie and Jim and Carol and Isabel, you guys know who you are, and Tom, that can help out with these guests, please. Jeremiah. And I'll try and answer this question real quick so I can get in there as well. Sean, you should be in there. So, who are you asking? Okay. Okay, so, so, Isabel's got guests on. Shoot. I would say, um, Jim? Sean? Sean or Jim? We both be good. I met him. Grace, can you help them? Like, not, you not take the lead, but can you help them with John's guests? Yeah. All right. You guys want me to just spend like two or three minutes wrapping up? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we're working. Oh, so the edification. So here's what should happen on the edification. It's important for a lot of you. These two people should talk and do a lot of drive to the appointment and practice it out loud. It's like, what do, you, what do you do if you're matching up with somebody who didn't do your financial plan or who's not your SMB? I want to come up with a genuine and authentic way of sincerely edifying them and then we're comfortable with and we'll go out and edifying each other. It's not hard to do if you just think about like, if I was edifying Steve, I would just think about the qualities that Steve has that I really respect and admire. Those are the qualities that I was talking about. Edification doesn't have to be exaggeratory, it doesn't have to be elevated, like, somebody doesn't have to be very good, but it does have to be edified. I just want them to know that they're really appreciative of the special. I think they're significant. I don't want you to talk about the So that's an important thing about edification. Oh, I can take a point. Alright, any other any questions on anything I covered tonight? Any questions? Alright, no problem. Good. Alright. Good. 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 Good.
Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna run his meeting.